Russ Oliver from OSS, uh, here to describe our new suppressor system. Um, for 120 years, suppressors have been based on baffles. The uh, cone baffles, K baffles, uh, there's uh, S baffles, now we have new mono core uh, baffle systems. They all have one thing in common. They create a sustained pressure inside the weapon system longer than the weapon system was engineered to, to control. So as what, the, what that causes is with all semi-automatic weapons, you get either a bolt velocity increase or a blowback out of the chamber. Now what happens is, instead of the gas leaving the muzzle as designed, it's retained inside these baffles. Those baffles retain the pressure inside the barrel longer than the weapon system was engineered for. So you get a bolt velocity increase of anywhere from 25 to 40 percent. So your bolt moves to the rear inside the weapon system uh, quite a bit faster than it was originally designed. What that causes is a, uh, an, a violent extraction. In some, in some occasions you'll get an extraction that is at such a great velocity the brass will actually flip around 180 degrees and then get caught back in the chamber. In addition to that, when the brass is extracted from the chamber itself, the barrel is still under pressure because it hasn't been able to evacuate the, the muzzle like it normally should be able to do. What that causes is a blowback effect in your face. That can be anywhere from 200, 200 to 250 in some suppressor designs in excess of 300 PSI out of the chamber into the shooter's face. So you have increased bolt velocity and then the effect of blowback in your face. Um, our design is completely different. We don't have a single baffle. Uh, it works on a premise much like a jet engine. So you have several turbines inside each other. The gas travels around these coils and is released from the muzzle. Uh, is what that does is a, a couple different effects on the weapon system. Um, the gas is never stops moving, so the weapon system does not retain pressure inside the barrel and the operating system longer than it was originally designed. For instance, on the 416, the 416 gets an average of uh, 30 to 40 percent bolt velocity increase with any existing suppressor design right now. When we put our suppressor on it, we get only a 6% bolt velocity increase. And that reduction in bolt velocity increase is related to directly to the design that allows the gas to expand as it naturally would out of the muzzle. A couple other aspects of the suppressor that are unique, uh, we utilize an octagon design uh, rather than, a, than an, a circle. What that does is that helps mitigate mirage. When you look at a circle, the convection, the heat rises to the center and then goes directly in front of your line of sight. When you use an octagon or a flat surface, and then it breaks on the corners. When you break that mirage on the corners, you have less intense mirage along your bore line, allowing you to engage the target at a greater distance for a greater number of rounds. Other aspects inside the suppressor, it's designed to be sustainable. So every component can be removed and replaced individually uh, to sustain that, that system. Like with a rifle, when you shoot out a barrel, you don't throw away the rifle, you replace it with a new barrel. Same theory with this suppressor. Instead of replacing the entire suppressor when your baffles are worn out, you simply replace the, uh, the first couple deflector series here, and that creates another 10,000 round life cycle out of your suppressor. Components are interchangeable. So you have a flash hider muzzle brake. This flash hider muzzle brake is available in a 5.56 through a 7.62. The suppressor housing itself can be slid over either flash hider muzzle brake. This first unit, once you, once you uh, attach your new flash hider muzzle brake, it's the same weapon length as it was previously. You apply the suppressor over the top of it. Now you're getting on a 14 and a half inch barrel, you're getting an 18 decibel reduction and you're not increasing the length of your weapon system at all. Uh, that's going to that's gonna go from 164 decibels on average on a 5.56 round to 146. Uh, if you want to go below 146 decibels or 140 decibels, which is considered ear safe, then you add the second module. This is called the signature reduction module. This module attaches to what we refer to as a back pressure regulator. Once this attaches and is timed, now you're going to go from 146 decibels to 138 decibels. At OSS, we don't measure that decibel rating a meter to the left, a meter to the right, or a meter back. All of our sound readings are measured from the shooter's right ear, same side as the ejection port. Uh, our test chamber is an eight by eight by six foot chamber uh, and with full pressure rounds. Uh, we do everything from, uh, like say on the, uh, the 416 or the MR556 SD testing, was everything from a 50 grain to a 77 grain bullet. Um, the worst case scenario was a 6% bolt velocity increase. Uh, average industry of the exact same weapon system uh, average, average industry decibel rating at the shooter's ear was about 144. Uh, we had one that was 142 and a half uh, with a bolt velocity increase of over 30%. Uh, Russ Oliver from OSS. You can see us at ossonline.com.